for the license plate birdhouse, the materials needed are two license plates and basically two square pieces of wood that would be five by five by three quarters of an inch. Eight screws, basically a coat hanger, and a peg. Uh, the tools you're going to need are a saber saw or a saw to cut the wood and a drill to drill the holes with and either a, a power screwdriver or just a regular hand screwdriver. Good morning, I'm Greg Summers. This is the Crafty Summer Show. Uh, today being spring, a uh, bit of showers in the air, nice rainy day. It's a good time to work inside and I think today we're going to build birdhouses. I can hear the birds out there. The early ones have already started building their nests and we're going to concern ourselves with the birds that nest in cavities or the ones that nest in birdhouses. Uh, being kind of unconventional, I think we should build some unconventional birdhouses today. Uh, the first one I want to build is the, I call it the license plate birdhouse, and I call it that because what do you do with all these license plates that you have stuck in the garage and you keep saving them year after year? And I go to yard sale and I see all these license plates, so Time to make a birdhouse. We're going to make some really simple ones, ones that are easy to assemble, uh, that require a small amount of materials and a small amount of tools. Okay, the license plate birdhouse, the first one we're going to do, and I think since it's a birdhouse, we'll use an environmental plate, and this is for the roof. And it's a pretty simple process. I find the middle of the bird or middle of the license plate, put it on the edge of the table, and bend it down to basically what I think is about a 90 degree angle, something like that. I can take a square, put it on the top and try to get that so it's about the right angle. Okay, we, after we bend it down to about a 90 degree angle, looks something like that. You can eyeball it or else take a square and set it on there and say, oh, that looks about right. And then what I want to do, since this is the roof, I want to have a little bit of overhang in the front and back and on the sides to keep the water from coming down on top of the birdhouse. So I want to measure in about an inch on each side, and I can measure that. Yep, boy, that was perfect. And that tells me how big I want the front and back pieces for the birdhouse. So I'm going to take a piece of wood like this. This happens to be cedar, a scrap piece of wood I've had laying around for a while. Obviously, it's time to use it. And so I simply am going to measure from the front to the back, and that gives me a reference line, then I'll measure. That's about five inches, so I'm going to measure five inches over here, and then five inches from the side. I want a piece of wood that's basically square. I hope that's ten. Oh, that's pretty close. So I'm going to connect a line between these two edges here, and then one down the middle, and come up with Hopefully two pieces of wood that are square. What I have to do now is, is separate these two or cut them. I'm going to use a scroll saw. You can use a hand saw or a, a coping saw or even a table saw, miter saw, whatever you want to use. down now and cut the rest of it. Actually, I wanted to clamp it down when I cut the first part, but I forgot. Okay, so now we're going to go right down the middle of the line. Uh, before I finish that cut, what I want to, I want to do something. I want to take this curved part of the roof here and I want to draw that onto the wood and cut that on what I think is going to be the top and bottom edge. And yeah, that's about the size of a quarter there, so I'm going to do it there and do it here and down at this end. I'm going to cut that first before I separate these pieces. This will make the roof go on a lot easier. A little bit of rounded edge so the license plate fits. 
I really think the governor will be happy with me reusing some of these license plates. Okay, so we have a bit of rounded edge top and bottom. And this one here I have to turn. Okay, so now we have a top and a bottom. That's going to fit right in there like that. Looks pretty good. And what I'm going to do before I put this together is I'm going to drill the hole for the cavity. And this is where you have to decide what type of bird you would like to have nest in the, in the birdhouse. And that will determine the size of the opening for the bird. I like to make houses uh, for wrens. I think wrens are pretty good birds. They tend to eat a lot of insects. And around here, you know what that is like in the summertime, especially after a little bit of rain. Now I need to find a drill bit, but I think we'll probably stop for a commercial at this time and be right back. Thank you. Okay, now that we're back, uh, I've simply drawn a line from top to bottom, so I kind of have an idea of where the center is going to be at on this. And now I, I want to lay out where the hole is going to be. I, I want to track wrens, I think I said that earlier, and wrens need a hole about seven-eighths to an inch, about the size of a quarter, not much bigger than that. Uh, if you have a hole that's bigger, then you'll attract sparrows, and they'll tend to fill up all the birdhouses. Wrens, uh, I usually put a little perch on there, and I measure down. Uh, if, if this is the opening right in here, I'm going to put the hole in there first for that peg. Very good. So now I want to drill a hole, and I'm going to use a, this is a, a device that's used for drilling holes in wood, mostly for plumbing. And I'm going to put this right on the center. Oops, sorry. Through one side. Through one side. Okay, now we have the hole for the cavity for the bird to get into, and we have a hole for the perch. And that's the front part, and now we're going to anchor it onto the plate here. The neat thing about license plates, they already come with pre drilled holes, so we're going to use those to mount that on there. I'm going to use drywall screws. Uh, it's probably best to get ones that are plated and so they don't rust. Put this on here. Get that lined up. Set the screw in place. And attach that one. And then we go to the other side. Make sure it's straight. Okay, now we have the front part mounted onto it, and now we're going to do the back part. Whenever you do a birdhouse, a couple of things you have to be um, forget the word. Well, a couple of things you got to remember. Number one is you want to have ventilation, and so I'm going to cut a little up where the roof is at. I'm going to cut a little bit of a notch, and that is going to allow for any air that comes in through the opening in the front and builds up heat on the top, it lets the air out so it doesn't build up too much heat. Okay, after we got the next license plate for the bottom and we have a bent and bend about the same angle as we did the top, then I just simply have to mark it with a pencil where I want to cut it off at so that it fits in here. And that doesn't have to be perfect. You can eyeball it. Uh, you can bend the piece over if you want to. And in fact, if it doesn't fit perfectly, that just provides a little more 
of air circulation inside the cavity itself. You don't want them to get too hot because if they get a little moisture in there, they'll start basically you'll steam them. So we got this here cut now to size and put it on here and that fits pretty good. All I have to do is attach it. All I have to do is attach it. I try to get it lined up so it's straight. With all this rain today, this would be a good time to find out if that if that bird feeder with the, with the straw roof worked out pretty good. A little bit of thatch on there and help that help the rain run off of it. Okay, so now we have the, the cavity, we have the hole, and we need to put the perch in there. You can use uh, for the perch, you can use a dowel rod. Or gosh, here's a here's a twig left over from a previous project. So I think we'll probably use that. Oops, doesn't fit. Now we have to make it fit then. What I want to do is make sure I get the bark off of this because the bark will tend to come off anyway after it's been up for a while. And whittle it down about to the right diameter. Taper the front a little bit. If you do it like this, you don't want to make them too big because if you force them into the opening, all it's going to do is split the wood. Okay, there we go. It looks like a Pinocchio birdhouse now. I thought <laughs> the twig is a little bit too big. Huh? Take it out and take my little saw here. This is a coping saw. It used to work really well. <laughs> okay, and this is a saber saw and it works great. Very good. And I'm going to use a little bit of glue here. Very good. So now, now we've got this part of the birdhouse done and we have to have, gee, we have to have something to hang at from. So let's do that next. I'm putting a hole in the top and shoot. Here's a big old piece of wire here. Oh, that's great. What I'm going to do is just kind of bend this and then bend this piece to fit inside and make it work like a clamp. I can put this in the other end and that's basically where that vent hole's at. And then I can put this, spring it out, put it over a limb, put the limb inside here and then put that back on. And anytime I want to take this down to clean it, then I can just unspring that, take it down, take the screws out and clean it out. So we have our license plate birdhouse. For the birdhouse gourd, you need a gourd, a fine tooth saw, and some aluminum or copper or steel wire. The next birdhouse we're gonna build is a relatively simple one, but we're gonna use a gourd. And I have some up here that I've grown in the last couple years and then they they sit around for a while and you think what can I do with that you know use it for decorations when they're green but after they dry out uh, what am I going to do well what we're going to do is make a wren birdhouse and it's very very simple to do all we have to do is cut off the front part to make the opening for the bird and we have to figure out some way to hang it and 
Here we go. I'm going to use this uh, coping saw again to cut the gourd and also I'm going to take a, a C-clamp and put it on the table and that just helps brace the gourd while I'm cutting it. So I put this up here and I'm just going to take a scroll saw. You could probably, if you had a Dremel tool, you could use that to cut through. If you're very careful, any, any fine tooth saw would work. Oh, here. Take a scrap piece of metal, stick inside there and clean that out. Get all that loose material. Uh, this is a good part. If What you can do is you're going to have a whole bunch of seeds come out of this. And those seeds, you might be able to replant them. Or put them out on your bird feeder. I don't know if anything will eat them or not, but... You could still do that. There we go. <laughs> wow. A gourd is a plant. I, I know that. And they're, they're decorative gourds, the little, little ones that are all different colors and shapes. They're kind of neat. This particular gourd is actually called a birdhouse gourd if you're going to order seeds or go to the hardware store and get what you need. I like to go to the local Fremont Hardware and, and pick up little packets of seeds they have there. And I'm sure they have birdhouse gourds in there so and now what I want to do is figure out some way to hang and that's the hard part uh, since it is a it's an enclosed cavity and rain lands on the top I have no problem with that but I want to make sure if I get any moisture inside here I have a little bit of a, a drain hole or a weep hole so I'm going to take that same drill and just poke a little bit of hole in there so if we do get any moisture it'll run right out the bottom great I'm all set uh, I was thinking about taking some wire and wrapping wire around here, and I've done that in the past. But I was just thinking that I have an old piece of uh, netting that may work perfect. Ah, I'm back. Uh, this used to be an old hammock that I picked up somewhere. So I'm going to take that and just simply use this as a method to hang my gourd. <laughs> <laughs> so first thing I'm going to do is just take it and kind of, there just happens to be a piece of, well wait, 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 yeah, put that right through that hole like that, and take all this extra stuff, and, oops, this may be harder than I thought, I thought, oh, this is going to be really, really simple to do, ooh, there, that might work. Okay, I'll grab a piece of this aluminum wire and put that through the opening there. Bend that over so it's going to be pretty tight. Yeah, I think that's... Oh. Yeah. I don't know. What do you think? You think that's... That could work. All right. I hate to ruin a good net, but... What I'm using here is little wire side cutters, and you could use a pair of scissors or any, any type of uh, wire cutter to cut this up. Hope I don't cut my finger. There we go. Okay, so now we got all this netting here. You know, I bet if I used a piece of string, I could, I could draw that up tighter and kind of weave it through. You'll, you'll be amazed that once you get one of these up, when the wrens start coming to land these things, they'll be shaking around and you're thinking, wow, how can they stay in there? Like I said, you'll be amazed. Uh, hang these on the front porch or someplace where you can watch them because they tend to be pretty entertaining if I can get this together. Bear with me just a few more seconds. I think we got it. All right, there it goes. I suppose I want to have that tight enough. You know how a project tends to, <laughs> tends to evolve a little bit.
There we go. Oh, now, now it's working. Put that over that piece of wire. Okay, we just about got it. You always want to check out, make sure uh, it pointed a little bit too far uphill. I need one more piece of wire here. I know what you're thinking. It's like an old cargo net. I think that might be it. I cut this extra piece of string off. Oh, I think that looks great. And I'm sure you agree with me. <laughs> okay, we'll put a little loop in the top so we can hang it up. Hang it up and watch it twist in the wind and pretty soon you'll have these little wrens coming up and they'll drive you crazy because they're going to try to make you go away from their nest with their noise. But that works out pretty good. So we've got a wren house here made out of a gourd. You're shaking your head. <laughs> Wait a minute, we can fix that up even better. <laughs> Okay, I got this big old rubber band here. And I'm just taking up extra slack with it. There, now, just think, they, they can fly in and land on the netting or they can land on the perch here. I think that's a great idea. All right, next birdhouse. Hang it up on the egg. Okay, for our next, our next birdhouse now, we're going to use a, a small aluminum pan. And it's a pretty thin pan, so it'll be easy to cut and drill holes in. And simply another, another scrap piece of wood here. I'm using cedar in this case. Cedar tends to be more rot resistant than, than uh, pine, but pine still works just as well. You use what you got. And I'm going to take this and simply outline the pan like that. That's good. Okay, and when I cut now, what I want to do is cut a little bit on the outside of this. I want to leave a little lip of wood, and yeah, that'll make it easier to attach. Okay, I'm going to take the old C-clamp here, clamp this down to the table so I can cut out that circular design. <laughs> and get the saver saw out and cut along the edge. Now, in cutting this, you don't have to be perfect because the birds, I, I don't think they really care. They care if they have a place to nest or not. And I don't know if they even do that. But uh, So you make it to suit your own taste. Then.
drop that piece out of there. Uh, now I want to get a small drill bit and I need that so that I can drill holes in the in the pan here. Be right back. Back and let's see. I think I'll use yeah, there's one right there. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm going to take the pan, and what I want to do is put, I can put three uh, holes in here, or four, it doesn't matter, but right through the lip of the pan. And that's where I'm going to drive my screws through, and that'll, that'll hold the pan to the, the back or the wood. And now I want to put the hole in the in the pan itself. I could put the hole in the wood if you don't have anything to drill through through metal here, but I have that really neat saw and I think I'll use that. Put that kind of through the center. And that looks like about the middle there. And put it right there. Perch down there. Okay, so now I guess just to be safe, I better clamp that down or I'm going to hurt myself. Probably do that anyway. And what I'm trying to do is keep the pan from twisting when I drill through, and I think I'll clamp the clamp down and then put the handle in there. And I'll keep that from turning. All right, here we go. Yeah, I know what you're thinking. Now what I'm going to do is when you when you cut through metal you tend to get some sharp edges and what I want to do is take a piece of metal and rub against those sharp edges to kind of round them over. If I had a file I probably would file that out a little bit. Take a little bit of sandpaper here. Sand that down so there aren't any sharp edges or burrs that the uh, birds could cut their feet on. Okay, that's pretty good. Now the last thing I want to do is I want to I want to mount a little piece of wood just inside here where the perch is going to go, so that when I drill through for that, uh, I have something to uh, secure the wood. So. Kind of mark and marking the outline of the of the pan itself. Hmm. It's funny how those things happen. Just when you figure you got everything all set, you drop it. And we cut the curve. there. Make sure that fits inside the pan where you want it to go. And that looks pretty good. And I'm going to mark where the two screw holes go. Okay, now I always have a place for everything.
Okay, now with the screws here, we anchored the piece of wood inside, and here comes the big challenge. Lock that in and drill a hole. So lucky. Of course, then we got to have that little twig. Ah, there it is. We're going to remove some excess wood so it just barely fits inside there. I'm using a little utility knife. You could use oh, any kind of knife you have or even a file or just rubbing against sandpaper to get the right size. Or you could buy a dowel rod that actually fits the exact size that you want. Very good. Okay, and I'm going to cut that off. And we'll stick a little bit of glue on it. Very good. Introduce that. <laughs> Cricket. Okay, we have that. Now, what did I do with that? Oh, there it is. And this is going to go on top of that. And you already have some holes. And I need, I hope this is the right one. It'll work. And again, I'm just going to use some drywall screws. Run those in. Enough to hold that in place. Uh, remember, this is going to be a rent house, so now what I can do is in the fall when they're not being used, I can clean them out, plug them up. If you don't, the mice will get inside and use them too. So now we have the house and the hanger, and if that doesn't hang exactly the way you want it to, then you can always bend the handle a little bit to change the balance point so it is a little bit more balanced if you want to. Gosh, we don't have a hook to hang it on, so let's make one of those. Take another piece. Oh, here's a little. This will work great. This is a little piece of copper wire. A little bit. It's not copper. It's aluminum, but it's a little heavier. This green wire is from a, is from a clothesline, so, and I would imagine the other one is too. But we'll make a little bit of a hook so we can hang out over a tree limb. So now we can hang it up or hang it on the porch and we have a pan birdhouse in. And we'll put that out as soon as the show's over. There we go. All right, we've got them mounted in the tree, and obviously you don't put all of them together. You spread them out, especially for a lot of birds that are solitary, and they don't like to have other birds around. So when you put these out, put like one birdhouse in a tree and spread them out. Get them up off the ground. It keeps the cats and the raccoons from getting into them. Put them out on a limb. Um, and just enjoy them. That's what they're for. And that's the end of our show today, so have a good time. Remember. You can do that. <laughs>